Number 14. On the moon's surface, lunar astronauts placed a corner reflector off which a laser beam is periodically reflected. The distance to the moon is calculated from the round trip time. What percent correction is needed to account for the delay in time due to the slowing of light in Earth's atmosphere? Assume the distance is 3.84 times 10 to the 8, and the Earth's atmosphere is equivalent to a layer 30 kilometers thick with this index of refraction. All right, so I think what's happening here is, you know, let's say here's the Earth, and here's the Moon, and uh, there's a certain layer here around the Earth's, uh, you know, atmosphere that is going to be uh, 30 kilometers thick or 30,000 meters. And in that thickness, the um, index of refraction is 1.000293. Now, we're just going to assume that uh, we're not even going to calculate the, the index of refraction then in air that it's going to take to get to the atmosphere. Um, and then, you know, because there's different layers of the atmosphere, they might even be talking about that the atmosphere all the way down to the surface of the Earth. I, I really don't know. But um, maybe maybe this whole distance is from the surface. I guess that's the assumption we'll make. Or from the center, basically. You know, then you might say, well, what about the center? Is this the center to center distance? Yeah, I, I don't know. There's going to be a whole bunch of assumptions we're going to make. So uh, let's just say that this is the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, the light has to travel through this. Then it goes to the moon. And then it's going to come back and have to travel back through that same atmosphere. Okay. So we know that this total distance here is going to be um, 3.8, what they say, 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. Okay, so 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. So you, if you know this is 30,000 meters, and this is three, the total is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters, let's just subtract the two, right? 3.84 times 10 to the 8 minus than 30,000. And I know I'm not going to round here, but... The length here now is going to be uh, three eight three nine seven zero 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 zero. Okay, so it's very close to you know the three hundred three hundred and eighty four uh, million, but this is now three hundred eighty three million, etc. Um, okay, so now um, all right, so now we have that. Now where do we go from here? Right, where do we now go from here? So we know this particular distance in here is going to be 30. So why don't we calculate, let's say, let's, let's, let's assume that the uh, atmosphere isn't there. How long would this trip take for the light? Well, we can simply use a formula, right? Um, we can simply use that the velocity of light is equal to the distance divided by the time. Now, to find the time, we just got to switch these two, okay? Now remember, the light's traveling to the moon and then back. So the distance is really twice this amount, all right? So multiply that amount, 3.84 times 10 to the 8, all right? And then uh, multiply that by 2. So it's 7.68, right? 7.68 times 10 to the 8. And then divide that by the speed of light. Now the speed of light down here, I'm going to use that exact number, all right? because I think the differences might be kind of small, so we'll see, okay? 299792458. All right, so let's see. Let's take that number divided by now, 299792458. And here we get about a time now of 2.56. Now that's the total time, right? Total round trip time, 2.56 seconds. Total round trip, I'll call it RT. All right, this would be without the Earth's atmosphere. So now how does the Earth's atmosphere now affect this? Well, the index of refraction is going to that. And by the way, I'm assuming right there's the speed of light in a vacuum. All right, so now what I have to do is I have to find the speed of light here. All right, in the atmosphere, this is then the speed of light in a vacuum. And now I have to basically then combine the two. All right, so uh, we know that the index of refraction is simply going to be equal to the uh, speed of light divided by the speed of light in a particular medium. Okay, this is the speed of light in a vacuum. This will be the speed of light in a particular medium. So um, in the atmosphere here, if I want to solve for that speed in the atmosphere, right, I'll call it V sub A, it's going to be the speed of light divided by then this 
n, okay? So it's going to be, th I'm going to use that exact number, 299-792-458. Divide that all by now, 1.000300. Yeah, good. 293. All right. So let's calculate that. So 299-792-458 divided by 1.000293. And this works out to be 299-704-644.5. Okay, so that's now the velocity of the light in the atmosphere. So what I'm going to do is I realize that, you know, to find the, uh, to find now, what I can do is basically find the time it takes to travel through this and then find the time it takes to travel through that and then add them both together. Okay, now remember the wave is going to the moon and back, so we're gonna have to basically take two of those distances, okay? So um, let's do the time here uh, through the atmosphere, that's what I'm doing in red. So the distance is 30,000, but it's two ways, so that means it's gonna be 60,000 I have to take into account. Divide that then by the velocity, and that's what we found over here, 299-704-644.5. And let's calculate that, okay? So 60,000 now divided by that value is going to be, the time here will be 2.00197, I guess 1, I'll round to there, okay? Times 10 to the minus 4th seconds. And then let's do the same thing now, but in the blue part, all right? And we'll use the exact speed of light, so the distance here is going to be twice this amount, because again, it's going to the moon and back. So take the 383970000, uh, multiply that by 2. So this is then 767940000. All then divided by now the velocity of the actual light in the vacuum because that's outer space. So that's going to be 299792458. And now calculate that. So divide that value by 299-792-458. And here now the time works out to be about 2.56157-2113. And what I also should have done is I should not have rounded that answer up there. So let me go back in the calculator and get that exact answer. Here it is. All right, so let's let's... Let's just change that slightly. So that was 2.56, uh, what do we have? 2.56, okay? All right, so now what I need to do is add these two numbers together to find the total time, right? So we add them together, okay? Let's, where's my, there it is, add them together. And what's now the total between those two? Well, let's calculate it. So we take that answer, add to it, then this. And here we go. We got 2.56177231. Okay? All right. All right. So now, this is now the um, estimated time if there was no atmosphere. And this is now the estimated time with the atmosphere. Notice this number is a little larger than this number, okay? So now we have to find the percent correction. So what we can do is basically now take uh, this, this value, the larger one. So we'll take the 2.56177231. Uh, and then we can divide that now by, so we can do this in a couple of ways. What I'm going to do is let me subtract it from this, the expected value, 2.56177.2251, and then divide it by that theoretical or expected value there, 2.56177.2251, and let's see what we get, okay? So take that answer there, subtract now that other value we found, the two point, there it is. Get that answer and then divide that now by, where do we have that value? There it is. Okay. 
So that comes out to now about 2.303. So there's 2.303 times 10 to the minus eight, all right? Now this could be viewed in terms of a, and then you would multiply that by 100. So this could be viewed, and then that would be times 10 to the minus sixth, right? That could be viewed as one way to view the percent correction. Another way to do it um, would be to take uh, one and then subtract from that one the 2.56177231 over then the 2.56177221. And let's see what we would get doing it that way. One minus now, parentheses, that value we got there, then divided by the original. Just got to go back in the calculator to find it. And what do you get? Here you get a negative value, right? Because again, you know, it's really the absolute value. I put the larger one over the smaller, right? But you can also have done that then the opposite way. One minus, if you did it the opposite way. So let me go back in the calculator and grab that number again. 251, where are you, number? There it is. And then divide them by the larger total. Close those parentheses. And again, we get the positive answer. So it does not matter which way you view this, okay? As you can see, it's really the magnitude that's important. You know, so this would be basically the percent correction there. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully that helps. If it does, help us out. Subscribe, like, maybe even mention us to your classmates. We appreciate it. Take care.